Hi, my name is Paul Gallimore, and in this video I'm going to outline a rapid method of developing a plot for a novel, movie, or play. Bear in mind that it's been said many times that if you boil it down, there really are only a limited number of original plots available. Just three, according to William Foster Harris in his 1959 book, The Basic Patterns of Plot. Others claim more, some say seven, some say 69 but everybody seems to agree that there's a, a fairly finite amount. Anyway, whatever the academics may think about that, there is no doubt that plotting a novel, film or play, is probably the hardest part of the writing process for most authors. The narrative and the dialogue tends to come a lot easier for most people. So one neat little trick to is, is to find your way to the imdb.com website which as you probably know lists details about films and actors and so on and there you can look up the title of a film that belongs in the genre that interests you and you'll find summaries and synopsis that have been supplied by IMDB members. Some of these are well written, some yeah, not so much. So as an example, assume that you want to write a detective story and you're fresh out of ideas. We could go to the IMDB site and look up The French Connection, which as you know is a, a great detective classic movie from the 1970s starring uh, Gene Hackman. And once there, what you do is read the synopsis, price it in your own words, and simply transpose and transform it into your own semi-original work. So, based on that idea, my bare bones version of the French Connection plot then might go as follows. Suave and urbane big league French de de uh, drug dealer Alain Charnier comes to New York to oversee a $32 million drug deal between himself and the mob. Bullying alcoholic bigot Popeye Doyle and his accomplice or, or his detective partner Claudie Russo have already got wind of the operation and they set out to catch the criminals. The contest that arises between the adversaries results in personal tensions between Popeye Doyle and French drug dealer Alain Charnier and not least because Charnier attempts to have Doyle uh, assassinated uh, and there are also tensions between Popeye Doyle and the narcotics special agent Mulderig who is brought in to oversee the police operation. So he's brought in over Doyle's head. Doyle ends up accidentally killing Agent Mulderig dur during the final shootout of the film. And the film then concludes with Charnier slipping safely away back to France and Popeye Doyle and Claudie Rousseau become suspended from duty. So that's a highly refined version of the plot. Uh, obviously there are lots of other characters and twists within the story but they are all laid out in the synopsis and they are there for you to lean on and alter as, as you please. So based on this idea of creating a plot I've taken the French connection and come up with my version of it which goes as follows. D.I. Ray Smith, D.I. stands for Detective Inspector, a detective in London who is a closet member of a far right wing uh, political organisation as well as an occasional drug user himself and a client of prostitutes becomes suspicious that the women in a brothel that he has just visited are illegally smuggled into Great Britain and that they are being forced into prostitution. So along with his detective partner Helen Davis who is a university educated fast-tracked police recruit uh, who also happens to have strong Roman Catholic religious uh, aff affiliations. Uh, they stake out the brothel, arrange a phone tap and prove that the brothel is indeed part of a chain of such establishments which is run by a political fixer who works within the Vatican in Rome. So this is obviously particularly distasteful for Helen Davis uh, because of the Catholic connection and because she has been wrestling with her own religious convictions for some time so it's setting up some conflicts within her. Um, because of the strong political implications of investigating a senior figure within the Catholic Church and because uh, D.I. Smith is already secretly under internal investigation by other police departments due to his racist tendencies, Smith is forced to hand over the case to a senior officer whom he has long since despised and considered to be a bent copper. 
Helen Davis, who has remained on the case, discovers that it is about to be closed down for unspecified reasons, joins forces with D.I. Smith to engineer an arrest, but things reach an unexpected and bloody climax when the pair snare not only the leader of the prostitution racket, but also a very senior British political figure who has an armed police uh, protection person with him at the time. So that ends in a bloody mess just in the same way that the French connection did. So that's it, that's the idea, that's the way to transpose a known plot into your own version uh, and uh, save yourself some major pain. So I'm not saying that reading the full synopsis of the French connection and rewriting it was a five minute job. It actually took me more than an hour to do that because I read the synopsis, I boiled it down once and then distilled it again before I then started coming up with my new version which you know we might call the Roman connection. Um, an extra special twi twist to the plot could be that the uh, the political fixer within the Vatican finally becomes the Pope. <laughs> uh, joking there. Uh, anyway, so um, so that's how you create your basic framework, and the little twists and turns uh, in the plot become a lot easier, and they're, they're more fun to write once once you've got the the basic plot out of the way. So if you'd like to see what I came up with when I did invent my own original plot all by myself, then click on the link just below this video and you can learn all about my book, The Mary Celeste Papers, which is selling quite well now. Good luck with your um, plotting and thank you very much for listening.